Afternoon, everybody. Um, really excited to be here and, and to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that, that we're doing. Before I get going, though, um, I'm curious. Could I have a show of hands as to how many people own a drone right now? Or somebody in their family owns a drone? At the risk of knocking over 200 water glasses. OK, how many people know somebody who owns a drone? OK. Um, and I'm going to guess how many of those were probably purchased for less than $2,000. I'll tell you, probably most of them are, even if you don't know. Um, and how many people have heard something bad in the media about the use of drones in the last little while? Wow, OK. Um, that's unfortunate. Um, and that's one of the challenges that, um, that I and, and Precision Auk and, and our industry as a whole really needs to, needs to work on. And, and one of the things I'm going to be doing today is talk about all the good news stories, the reason why I'm excited to be working in drones, and it's not because people are blocking firefighters from doing their job. Um, so what I'm going to talk about largely is what's important, why drones are actually disrupting a lot of the businesses that we work on, um, why drones are changing the way we do business, the way we grow food, the way we re react to environmental issues, um, and generally speaking, why we're able to make a huge difference and to do more with less. Um, as Rick mentioned, my name's Ernie Iron. I'm the CTO and founder of Precision Hawk. Uh, Precision Hawk is, is really, we consider ourselves to be an information company. We use a drone, um, the Lancaster here, who I'll introduce in a second, um, as one of, our, one of our data sources. But really, the goal is to provide information. That's what matters. And in all the industries that we work towards, the end goal at the end of the day is information. How do you make decisions? What do you make decisions on? Um, Pirelli, Pirelli Tire used to have a great uh, ad campaign that said power is nothing without control. I would say in our day and age, a far more pertinent statement would be action is nothing without information. And what Precision Hawk does is really work with these various industries to provide information to allow actions to be taken intelligently and appropriately at the right time. Um, so yes, as, as, as Rick mentioned, um, this, this, uh, this is our UAV. It's one of our data sources. Um, it's named after Ron Lancaster, the uh, Canadian Football League quarterback who's also known as the Little General. Um, <clears throat> he uh, definitely did an awful lot um, through his years and in some circles is considered a bit of a football hero. So we had some football fans on our, on our team when the, the naming request went out for these guys. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to primarily talk about a few of the issues that, that we see uh, day to day and ways that are important for us to try and address those. Uh, we live in an incredibly volatile world. It's an important thing to recognize that we all know that, and again, you look at what's happening in North Carolina, and we'll come back to that again too in a second, things are changing. And in the face of this, for instance, we're talking with farmers who are being asked to double their output within their lifetime to be able to feed a human population that is set to explode. And we're doing this in the face of increasing costs for their inputs. We're asking them to do this in highly volatile weather conditions, in areas where arable land is iffy at best, um, and telling them that they have to have a smaller footprint while they're doing it. And so the way that you can do that is to be able to react to their problems and provide them information that they can use to act appropriately. As I mentioned, our focus is on information. That's really what matters. Um, when we're talking about all of these different pieces, all these different steps in, the, in this, this value chain that we bring, the platform, it's just the means. We will pull data from any source we can get. And the main point, though, is to put that information in the hands of the right person at the right time, because time is absolutely crucial. Um, you might think, OK, so we do a lot of work in agriculture. And you might say, well, seriously, how fast does corn grow? Um, but that's actually not the appropriate answer. A farmer wakes up in the morning and he has to make it, or she has to make a decision right then, right there. Do I spray? Do I reseed? Do I irrigate? Do I, um, do I harvest? All these have to be made right then and they have huge impacts on the bottom line of, um, of that farm. And so being able to respond very, very quickly in a way that allows them to make decisions is absolutely critical. Another great example, um, and we you just, uh, last speaker, we were talking about water. Uh, I will tell you that wherever we go, um, and we have operations all around the world, um, one of the first things people ask us is, do you do anything in water? 
It is absolutely one of the most critical aspects of our time in being able to deal with and use smartly or use intelligently our water resources. Uh, there's a lot around that. We have you know, work that we're trying to do to measure wet water content, water quality, um, algae composition, things like that. But what I'd like to do is give you guys a couple examples that sort of ground um, how we work on these things. Because um, you might think of an ocean dead zone or a dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico. That dead zone is an area where nothing can live, nothing can grow, and it can be hundreds of miles across. And you might think, well, how does an airplane that size, or any of these drones that we're talking about that, that, we've, um, that you guys know of, um, how can that possibly help mitigate the effect of 200 miles of poisoned Gulf of Mexico? And the way it does that is it does that by monitoring at a very local, very timely scale. So you're able to continuously and repeatedly monitor um, rivers, culverts, streams. So you can pinpoint the exact location, the exact effluent where uh, the pollutant is coming from. I mean, the, the current state of the art right now is, is uh, two dudes in a boat with a Dixie cup and sampling water. And, and you can imagine they can't sample enough water and they can't be out there often enough to get a clear picture. And so you need something that allows you to be very precise, very repeatable, and very low cost operationally. And that's how you do it, by knowing exactly where you need to put your efforts. <clears throat> As I mentioned, um, we live in an extremely volatile world. Um, anybody just needs to look at the news or um, fly over the Carolinas to know that this is a very rapidly changing world that we live in. Uh, these pictures are from the Oso mudslide in March of 2014. Um, for those of you who don't know, it was a wall of mud, came down off a hillside, uh, killed 43 people and destroyed almost 50 homes. The issue in a situation like that is you need to get first responders on site as fast as you can so they can do the jobs that they need to do. In Oso, the slide was still moving, there was a risk of more slides, and the mud had actually dammed the river, which is creating a lake and creating further flood hazards upstream and turning the, the mud at the site into quicksand. What they needed was some way to get information to tell them where they needed to put their efforts, where they needed to cut channels, where it was safe to go, and where it was safe to send people. The Problem was, the weather was also terrible. So you would, make, you would normally do this with a manned aircraft or a helicopter but they had at most 30 minutes window to get a plane to take off from an airport, fly in, get the data, and fly back out, and that's not enough time. Uh, so we had crews on site working with uh, some of the response groups there. Um, with a drone on site, something this size, you can throw it, you can get the data, you can get back down in 15 minutes, and then you can get that data up into the cloud, process that, turn it around, and get it to the stakeholders and the shareholders who need to see that data to make decisions. And so that's one of the ways that technology like this is able to really leverage the existing tools that we have. We have the resources in many of these cases, but what we lack is the ability and the information to tell us exactly where we need to put them. Uh, we came from agriculture, Precision Hawk um, started in agriculture. It's still one of the things that we do most of. Uh, and I'd like to give you an example that's always one of my favorites is in crop damage. Uh, if you can imagine you're a, an Indiana corn farmer and a bad hailstorm just went through and damaged a big section of your crop. Um, right now, the way you would talk to your in insurance adjuster, it would be the two of you will go out, you'll stand in the back of a pickup truck, and you'll hagger, haggle over how much damage you think took place. And you do that based on the severity of the storm, um, what the insurance adjuster knows of the area, and just ballparking it. Now, you need some way to be able to ground through that. Go out there and provide real numbers so, um, so that the farm can get on with their, with their business, which is growing, growing the corn. Now, if anybody has ever been in eight-foot mature corn, once you go in there, it's nearly impossible to even figure out where you are, let alone to get any kind of holistic view of what actually happened to the field. But with technology like this, you're able to quickly launch the bird, it'll take off, fly a survey of the area, and land and report the exact amount of damage very, very quickly so that the adjuster can, can cut a check, get at the farmer, and get on to the next farmer down the road who's facing the similar issue. It's about making it more efficient and more quickly to allow those resources to go to the people who need it and when they need it. 
Um, this is a, another favorite picture of mine. This is Farmer Dale. Um, Farmer Dale is, farms about 10,000 acres of canola in uh, northern Alberta. And we went out to talk to Farmer Dale and, and get some nice pictures of Farmer Dale, of course. Um, but really the idea was to understand what we can do to allow Farmer Dale and, and other growers like it. I mean, this is, this is not um, supposed to be a, a specific one-off case. We were trying to find out where are your pain points? You know, what does this technology do? And one of the things that's important, and the reason why I asked about how many people have drones, work with drones, um, know somebody who has a drone, this technology is very rapidly being commoditized. This technology is going to be here. This technology in the near future is going to be something very much like a cell phone. Um, for a lot of these industries, it's going to just become part of their standard operating procedure, and they're going to wonder how they ever got by without it because of that ability to see in ways that they otherwise and previously could not do. Uh, so I think what is, a, is really a challenge, and, and I started off this um, a very brief talk about that, is how do we, and, and, and I mean uh, Precision Auk in the UAV industry, UAS industry, um, work to make sure that groups like you, who are doing really incredible things in this wide variety of, of events and applications and around the world, how do we make sure that what people hear about are the good news stories where we can actually help people who are doing the right thing and not having everybody hear about something like a drone that's impeding a bunch of firefighters trying to put out a forest fire in California. Um, because really, the stuff that gets me out of bed in the morning is being able to do that and to make impacts that are really gonna change the world. And the way we do that is enabling the people who are on the ground changing the world have the information that they need to do a better job. Thank you. <laughs>